Welcome to the Fablo AgriLife Podcast, where we promote better living for healthy Texans. Every episode, we'll cover a health or wellness topic, as well as some lifestyle challenges that we face. All right, so welcome to episode two. This is the Fablo AgriLife Podcast, and we're going to talk about holiday safety, um, some nutrition tips, and challenges, and basically being mindful this month of December. And we're going to go around again to introduce ourselves, but yay, Jessica's here in this episode. She wasn't able to be in our last episode, but she's here today. Uh, But I'm Jocelyn. I'm from Frio County. I'm Jessica Fabian, and I'm in B County. June from Live Oak. I'm Nicole from Wilson County. And I'm Drew from Atascosa County. And we're going to go over our dynamic, because Drew brought up a good point. We're all in different stages of our life. Um... I'm the single one who basically has a fur baby, and it's a thing. <laughs> Just like to say, if you have a dog and you talk to them, it's okay. Because <laughs> someone said it wasn't. Ugh. In June. <laughs> Eat her. No, you have to see it in person. <laughs> I didn't know you I had a problem there. until we were with our friend Lethe, and she's like, are you talking to him? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I'm like, he's sensitive. <laughs> Don't listen with me. That's my baby. He's a Yorkie mix. But Jessica. Um, well, I'm a newlywed, and we also have a cat, and we're getting a puppy this weekend, so more fur babies along the way. Um, there's not really a whole lot about me other than... Your Stay. house? Oh, yeah. yeah. House yes, my husband is re- do, or renovating our house. He just, he's been working on the kitchen, put tile work for the countertops, and it looks amazing. And he's just got to finish the backsplash, and then we'll kind of hold off for a little bit until after all the holidays and everything. And then he'll kick back up, and just, I think we're going to do the floors next. Nice. That's mm-hmm. exciting. It's like a brand new house. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. So right. how do you feel about these renovations? It, I like it because um, the house is older, so we're making it ours, basically, mm-hmm. and we get to A pick lot. out colors and what we Ooh. want, and so it, it really did. I like it because, good. and he's really, really good at all that stuff. And so he's a handyman. He is he a handyman. Do it. Nice. <laughs> yes. That's wonderful. Well, so earlier we talked, though, that you were going through all these changes, mm-hmm. like you moved, <laughs> moved. started um, working in a different county. Yes. Got, got married. married. A lot of changes, but yeah. it's all been good. Um, I can't complain and just go in with it. Just go with the flow. My mm-hmm. question is, have you always been calm and able to t- handle <laughs> stress? Or you just, you have tips for handling stress? I, I think I've just always been pretty... <sighs> it's genetic. <laughs> <laughs> very much like my dad. No. We're just like no, easy really. going. Um, I mean, I do get stressed though at times, but I think... For me, just talking about my day with my husband really helps, or exercising, something like that. That usually helps me with stress. (laughs) June brought it up, because June's also very calm, and she's like, she met her match. You're more more calm. Yeah, you're more calm. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. June. Um, So I, uh, I'm married. We've been married for 15 years. We don't have kids. But we do have three fur babies. Um, we have a golden. She is 14 years old. And she's Aww. pretty much been with us yeah, since the, the beginning. Whole time. So, um, and then we have um, Tula, who Jocelyn actually re- <laughs> I was going to say, how do you not <laughs> bring her up? Like, <laughs> she, gave, she gave Tula to us. She's a Doberman. And then we have um, a little Jack Russell mix, Howie. And so, um, yeah, we like to travel and um, listen to live music and, yeah, pretty, pretty routine or common, whatever you want to (laughs) say, as a couple. And do you talk to your dogs? (laughs) (laughs) I do, but Ah. I don't expect them to talk back. (laughs) To be fair, you met McQueen, and he does respond, because you were trying to train him, and he always had, like, a little response. (laughs) He he, he responds. (laughs) So, I'm curious, what is his response? It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do move him, but he's like, oh. <laughs> so 
<laughs> or he'll bark, or he'll scratch you, like, hey, listen up, how dare you. <laughs> and he's, obs- he's obsessed with my husband. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. To be fair, he's obsessed with anyone new, and then it's like, forget mommy. And then once he's done with you, maybe two days later, he'll like, okay, I'll go back to mommy. But whenever <laughs> you stay over, like, he... Oh, my gosh. He doesn't go to sleep. He, like, stays at our door and is whimpering. Yeah. <laughs> so the first night I stayed over with McQueen at her house, she, she I looked woke, like a new mom. <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, my hair was up. I was so tired. And, like, McQueen was all chipper. I'm like, how? You didn't even sleep. <laughs> he, he slept all the way home. Yeah, I was all pissed. I was trying to wake him up the whole time. Like, you got to stay up. But that's so you're getting prepared <laughs> for a husband and a child. But we're, so, we still got to get you there. <laughs> the funny thing is um, we have kennels. We used to kennel dogs. And so we have, like, this little kenneling area. And the next time Jocelyn says, she's like, you're staying in the kennel. <laughs> <laughs> I need to sleep. <laughs> So I've been married for 11 years, and I have a toddler. She's 20 months old. She's so cute. <laughs> she is. Um, so yeah, we've. Uh, it's it's fun being a working mom. It's challenging, but it's fun. And yeah, Drew. Well, I have um, two teenagers. One's in seventh grade, and one's in a sophomore. And. We've been, and then my husband and I have been married for 18 years, so it's been a challenge with starting work. I guess I went back to work when the little one was in second grade, and that's been hard because of this job. It's it's a fun job. It's a great job. It's just um, a lot of traveling, and um, it's great to have friends you can work with, and that helps the stress level, I think, too, and that probably helps the dynamics with my husband, too, that I'm not going home going, ah! <laughs> and then, you know, but it's nice because the boys are older, and so that means, hey, they can clean their own rooms. They can do stuff by themselves. Yeah. I just want to add, because you only glanced through it, but your boys are so respectful and so sweet. I love mm. them. Thank you. They, they are. better be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I'm single, but Jessica is a newlywed, and everyone here has been married for over a decade, so tips for Jessica. (laughs) Marriage advice for newlyweds, a.k.a. tips for Jessica. (laughs) So I would say um, communication, you have to communicate, you know. Like, like my husband and I, we have very busy schedules, and we have our daughter, so we have to communicate to keep it going and make sure we're all on the same page and trust. You have to trust one another. So yes, keep that one. trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, going along with the trust, um, it's good to have. That just reminded me. It's good to have. Um, like I'll have girls' weekends, or he'll have guys' weekends. Mm-hmm. So we have time apart. But when we come back, we really do appreciate Mm -hmm. just the time we have together. And that being said, like, find something that y'all both enjoy doing. And, like, for Saudi and I, our common thread is live music. And so we, that's what we enjoy doing together when we do have time off. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Drew? Um, I'm going to go with, if y'all want to have kids, if you're going to have kids, Mm -hmm. then... Um, The best advice that was given to me was, remember, y'all were married first, and then the kids came along. The kids, if you do your job right as much as you want to keep them at home and forever, no, there's going to come a point I'm going to kick them out. But but you do your job if they you do raise them like that. So then you're stuck together again, and you have to find that commonness again. So Mm -hmm. it was so we like to go do things. We'll go on little vacations by ourselves. We'll go have a little date nights by ourselves, And especially now that they're older, we can go out to eat by ourselves without, you know, I should still, you know, meals are so big, I still share a plate. And so I'm still the one saying, all right, which one of you is not really hungry? 
Um, <laughs> the 13 year old doesn't eat a lot. So usually it's like, what do you want? All right, I'll split it with you. Mm -hmm. um, so when we get to go by ourselves, I'm like, oh yeah, I have taste buds. <laughs> you know? This is probably why I think I have a 10 year old palate because I still eat like that. <laughs> um, I don't have the chance because um, I just don't. Um, but that's the one thing is find, find that time just to be y'all because eventually it's just going to be y'all again. And you want to enjoy each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, in an earlier conversation, we were talking about how don't lose yourself. It's really hard to be caught up in being or forming into your partner or even your kids. Like, because um, Rachel Hollis, I read Girl, Wash Your Face. Or halfway, I'm halfway through. I'll own it. Because um, it's more mommy related. But she brought up a lot of good points. Like, it's okay to have a dream. It's okay to... Um, remember that because especially if you're a mom like you need to be a role model for your kids so mm -hmm. if you are chasing a dream let them see it so they mm -hmm. let them know it's okay to have a dream and then I was obsessed with the Beckhams um, <laughs> and their tip for awesome marriage was date night I mean even with the kids in life and busy they always have date night at least once a week and like that's their tradition so always find time and uh, this is from a single person because I don't... <laughs> this is my observation. <laughs> but let's oh, go into... <laughs> get into the holiday safety tips. And Nicole, take it away. Okay, so, so um, talking about the family dynamic um, of everything, I uh, read an article, um, Healthy News by Linda Carroll, and they did a study that teens... Um, who eat dinner with their family are more likely to make healthier choices. So that's one thing, you know, we're all at different stages of our lives. And um, I know with my daughter and my husband, we eat dinner together just about every night. Unless, you know, I'm working late or something random, but we always sit down and eat dinner together. Um, so I think that's very important to think about that. And even, you know, especially with teenagers, they got this practice and that practice and this, that, and the other. Um, even if you can't do it every night of the week, then whatever night is available is to eat, sit down, and have a meal together. Um, so mm -hmm. I think that's really, really important. I'm glad that they, they thought about doing a, a study about it, you know? You no, know, I'm going to agree because um, we sit down with our kids and eat um, supper together every night. Well, most nights. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think it becomes a big deal because even doing that I become I think we become complacent if I'm using the right word where it was okay there for a while we had TV on so we were just oh. watching TV and then they would be on their phone so the or technology. even we would be on our phone and so you had to kind of pull yourself back from that and say whoa what's the point of doing this if we're not gonna now there are times like right now I love watching all those Christmas movies so like last <laughs> night Christmas vacation was on and so when we're eating we're watching Christmas vacation and all laughing about the same thing though mm. um it's not, you know, it's all something appropriate everybody can watch um, because sometimes that's where we get complacent, like, oh, that's okay, that's just background noise where really they're paying attention to it and we're not paying attention to mm -hmm. each other, yeah. asking about our day because we're just involved in the show. And so, but I think that's right too. Also, with the vegetables and stuff like that, I have a little. I say I have control. I'm not sure if I do. But, you know, <laughs> I at least, you know, I see them put it on their plate and try to, you know, I don't just try it. I have yeah. one rule. Even when we go out to schools and stuff, my my thing is with the kids is I say I have one rule. I don't care if you like it. Um, I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. I want you to try it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just try it. Now I know I have to follow the same rule. So that's <laughs> <laughs> but But I think that's right. With the sitting down for a meal, I think it is very important. Um. Out of curiosity, just because I have a baby niece, and I know the first thing they do, and I don't blame them because I've hung out with my niece, and I know I need some me time, too. Um, but do you, like, when she's eating, they'll put on an iPad, and she'll just watch it. While Sometimes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, but, okay. You know, yeah, it's not the best thing to do. It's not what yeah. you but want you need to do. But peace of mind, right? But sometimes if you've had a rough day, and it's like, okay, okay. Hmm. Just please let me sit here. Yeah. I mean, can I eat my food while it's hot? I mean, that's a big deal too when they're that little. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't let Tessa watch it while we're eating, oh. but um, but yeah, uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is the best. <laughs> <laughs> she loves Minnie Mouse and Goofy. <laughs> so if 
if I'm having to get something done, you know, a working mom with with a toddler running around the house, um, you 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 have to go to work and then you have to come home and do stuff. So and um, occasionally work has to come home with you, but uh, so Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is my savior. She, <laughs> she loves Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, but um, that's good. I don't think about it too much. You know, limiting like screen time. You know, they're supposed to only have so many minutes a day and all that stuff. Um, but I, I don't let her just sit there and watch TV all day. She's mm-hmm. not, she's not that age where she's even interested in watching yeah. TV that long, but you know, 20 minutes of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, I can get some stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> I think with more with my niece, she doesn't even watch it. She just sees us on her phone. So she gets the iPad. She thinks she's on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's more of that, but I'm like, your hands are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's just funny. Um, I will say, to get ideas for family mealtime, we do have a website called Dinner Tonight. It's dinnertonight.tamu.edu, and they have family meal conversation starters to get you started if you need that help. Um, They're really fun, um, and they're simple. And again, just visit that website, and we'll have that link on our blog. You know what's fun? They also have napkins. I saw them not too long ago in a restaurant. They Mm -hmm. had napkins with, like, did you know something, or, Mm -hmm. like, ask your neighbor this, or I don't know. It was just different napkins, and... It was sitting around um, with adults, and nobody was talking, (laughs) and that was the conversation starter where we just started talking, and it wasn't about work. It was about just, you know, funny topics Mm -hmm. and not really learning anything about anybody, which was okay. Um, We were just having a conversation, though. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, be careful with your people, because like I know, anytime you start hypothetical questions, like Uh-oh. we don't we don't bring it in with my dad, because he just gets upset. Like, <laughs> and I was like, it's hypothetical. <laughs> Why are you upset? So just know your audience. <laughs> um, so, any other helpful tips, or you want to move on to the next topic? So, um, during the, I mean, it's the holidays. Um, so, another article I wanted to bring up. Um, from Circle of Health um, by Lori Corbin. She interviewed a registered dietitian and um, is drinking. So oh, yeah. um, drinking too much, you know, it, it can be dangerous. So um, a moderate amount, so being back, going back to being mindful about how much alcohol you are drink, consuming at, you know, your next holiday uh, party or get-together, Um Commonly, a moderate amount of of alcohol is one drink for a woman and two drinks for a man per day. Per day, mm-hmm. not hour, As but I per said, day. I did bad in Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, one drink is actually like five ounces of wine, uh, not. Eight or twelve. <laughs> Have you seen the, the cups body. though? There's nice cups that are bigger. Yes. <laughs> and there are those cups one. out there that will hold an entire bottle of wine. So technically, you're drinking one glass of That's wine. That's what I did. But it's a lot, a lot more than five ounces. Um, so so yeah. So just be mindful. And women, unfortunately, or fortunately, I feel like I need to be taking notes. <laughs> I should write this down. I know, I need to be writing this down. Um, <laughs> women don't metabolize alcohol as well as men do. That's true. I don't know why, but it's weird. <laughs> so, Same thing, like their metabolism is just higher. They can lose weight faster. It's just not fair. <laughs> it's just, you're right, it's just not, it's not fair. fair. <laughs> Dang it. Um, <laughs> so when you are drinking, make sure you're eating something, um, something that has protein and fat. Um, so it helps... Ab- it's better at absorbing, and it is lingers in your stomach longer than a carbohydrate. So just keep that in and mind. And like you brought that up, because most college kids, including me back in the day, thought you had to eat a lot of bread after drinking so much because to, to soak it up. To soak unquote. it up. So yeah. eating proteins and fats—that's a very good fact. So proteins and fat are, um, like I said, it, it empties the stomach slowly, um, whereas carbohydrates it processes. Um, more quickly uh, so just keep that in mind when when you're doing that and drink in moderation be mindful 
<laughs> and we I'm will so say go back to your holiday, our first episode, where we gave general tips of how not to lose it with your family. Yes. Mm-hmm. Again, I should have wrote notes on that one because I did lose it at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <and> <laughs> I did drink more than five ounces. Um, but so <laughs> go back to that. Just remember, take some breathers and do watch your alcohol. But talking about alcohol, we can talk about drinking and driving. Drew? Yeah, as you're being mindful about how much you're drinking, um, think about when you get in a car. Think about um, your loved ones um, getting in a car behind a wheel. Think about you uh, driving next to somebody that has been drinking too much. Um, Something to think about is there has not been a deathless day since November 7th, 2000. That's 18 years. of, And I think... The, it's like 66,000 um, deaths since then. This is some information from Texas AgriLife Extension and TexDOT. Um, so when you're driving this weekend, think, or this holiday, or any day, any day, drive like the person you want to be by. So drive like the person that you don't think is going to be crazy and hit you. Um, Think about you driving next to somebody. That's somebody's mom. That's somebody's son, daughter, loved one. It doesn't matter. Good friend. Um, That's somebody's loved one. So drive like, if we all drive with that in mind, then we're not trying to get around them so fast. It's not going to hurt you to be five minutes late. Um, There's the old saying is um, what's what arrive alive and so you know that's sometimes sometimes you just (laughs) that's my motto (laughs) yes i mean and sometimes you just have to sit back and say say all right it's not worth it this this car up there is kind of driving crazy i'm just gonna pull back and yes i'm going five miles under the speed limit oh for heaven's sake you know (laughs) um or you know you get around somebody but you just you you have to think about those other people and talk to your teenagers about driving um and any distractions not just texting there's a lot of different distractions it's changing a playlist it's um, also, I mean, obviously texting, but it also could just be conversations that they're yes. having with friends that you start not paying attention. And I can guarantee you, all of us have been driving for a while, and we have all been distracted by the radio, by a conversation you're having. Um, your kids. Your kids. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, just the other day, I was in San Antonio taking my son to the doctor's appointment, and I just totally missed a red light, like locked up my brakes. He was like, what did you do, Mom? And I was like, oh, my God, I just did not see it. I just did not see it till I looked up because I was thinking about something else. So that does happen, and you just have to remember, was that, was that worth it? Why wasn't I paying attention? I will say I'm really bad at that because of routines, like going to the office. I've passed a few red lights, so, like, try to not be in the zone or, like, oh, it's just a routine. Like, try to wake yourself up because I, I, you're just so in routine that you're driving, and then you're like, oh, was that a red light? Or is that a stop sign? I'm really bad at those. Um, <laughs> supposedly they're optional for me. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so just wake yourself up. Her. Yeah. <laughs> don't be driving that by. Too. Don't <laughs> drive with us. <laughs> I, well, to be fair, I'm always the passenger. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Just, that's why. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Drew. <Jared. laughs> so just be careful on the road, especially during the holiday season. People probably will be drinking, so really be cautious. Um, but we're going to wrap it up with our challenges and substitutions and nutrition is going to be in the challenges as well. Stay fab and get low with our monthly challenges. Uh, who wants to start with their challenge? Jessica? Oh, okay. So <laughs> my challenge is to try to take whatever, you know, your favorite holiday dessert or whatever it is and just substitute it with something that makes it just a slightly bit healthier. So like like an applesauce loaf cake that I made today for everyone. It was, it was delicious. delicious. <laughs> it really was. I was going to say, is there more? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please, take it. Uh-huh. Um, and so the applesauce in there actually cuts or is like a substitution for butter or oils, um, shortening. And so it really, you know, gives it, you know, I think it even gave it a, a little better flavor to it as well. It was, really it was sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, really it was still very moist. Yeah. It wasn't dry. It, it was, was really, really good. Mm-hmm. 
and I put raisins in there. And you could add walnuts, but I wasn't sure about any allergies. So I left that out. But if you wanted to add that in there as well, you can. And I'm sure we could probably post the recipe too. Yes. Yeah. So where did you get the recipe from? Yeah. I got it from the Better Living for Texans uh, website. It was in their newsletter actually a couple of years ago. And they talked about food substitutions. Yeah. And I remembered it because I talked about it in a program. And I was like, oh, I want to talk about that today on the podcast. So we will get that posted. Yes. Um, also, we're launching a website pretty soon, um, so stay tuned. Um, and we'll on our website, we'll have a blog with the recipe on there, so you can try it. Uh, but yeah, I it was a really good recipe. I you should come to our site just to get the recipe. <laughs> it was really delicious. Or maybe it's because Jessica is just a good baker. But it was it was like really delicious. <laughs> June. So I'm gonna work on establishing a healthy morning routine currently like I get up late I snooze I don't know how many times I'm in a rush Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I just want to work on um waking up a little bit earlier and maybe having like my clothes set out already and ready to go um anyway yeah just a smoother morning routine I will add okay so I Evidently, I need to stop watching YouTube, but I watch, I uh, listen to Sarah's day on YouTube, and she brought up a good point, um, trying to have a, a routine even at night, like, if you go to bed early, you'll wake up early, mm-hmm. so put up a timer, um, her thing was 11, so maybe make 11 the, the latest, mm-hmm. um, but if you have kids, of course, it's going to be earlier, um, but you are, I guess, I see commonly, with, like, my house, my parents are like, you're out, but then I can hear them talking. So, like, what time are you going to bed, right? Mm-hmm. So you put your kids to bed, but you have to be mindful of what your hours are, too. So I always think about that. Um, another thing she brought up is um, trying to work out in the morning, which I know is tough. Um, but, like, Reese Witherwood said, ha- happy with the happy endorphins, you don't kill people. <laughs> <laughs> so get those endorphins oh. in, in the morning. <laughs> I butchered the quote, but it was basically that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Happy people. <laughs> wait, 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 was it where you, when you have endorphins? You're happy, and happy people don't still kill people. Right? Okay. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so get those endorphins. Makes sense. <laughs> Nicole. So my challenge for for everybody is to um, don't go on a diet. I know everybody's getting wanting to do their New Year's resolution and everything, but um, I challenge you not to go on a diet. Instead, um, eat. In moderation, substitutes. try to add, try to do some of Jessica's substitutes to make it a little healthier um, meal instead of, you know, all the full fat. And then um, add vegetables, any kind, all kinds matter. So whether it's canned, uh, frozen, or fresh, add some vegetables into your meals. So that's my challenge. Don't go on a diet. And they say, try to eat the rainbow vegetables. I forgot what book I read. I actually read it. Because <laughs> I, I usually listen to it. Uh, I like audiobooks. But I read that book, and it was, try to eat your, I think it was the Carmen Diaz book. I'm not sure which one. One or two. But she was like, eat, make sure your plate is not just all greens. Make sure there's a mix of color in your vegetables as well. Because when we think healthy, it's just like salad or kale or something. But yeah. You want the rainbow. Taste the rainbow, but in vegetables. (laughs) (laughs) Not (laughs) My challenge is to work out or to move, I guess, would be a better word to start out with, to move for 15 minutes every day for 30 days. Um, That way I'm not stressed out about in 20 days I'm going to have to make time for 30 minutes or 45 minutes. I'm already doing it for... 15 minutes. Um, now it's not the five minute, five minute, five minute or something like that. It's going to be just the 15 minute. I started it yesterday. I actually started it with another friend and it did help because I will tell you, I got home and I didn't want to do it. And I got a text that said, Hey, I just finished day one done. (laughs) Oh man. Okay. Well I got to do it now. (laughs) So I went in my room, I shut the door and I didn't do anything big. Um, I didn't even change out of my work clothes. I'd put my tennis shoes on, which I wear tennis shoes all the time. Um, (laughs) But I started walking in place, I jogged in place, did a few jumping jacks, did a few just walking around. I was even um, jogging in place, folding my clothes that were there, because now I'm staring at them. 
um, <laughs> and, I, and I need to put them up. And so just little things. I did some sit-ups, did some push-ups, but it was 15 minutes. I will say the 15 minutes, I was like, oh, I have to be almost done. And I checked the timer. I had eight minutes left. Um, so then you just keep going. <laughs> 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 but it was like, oh, man. So at first, and then I I thought, um, I used to be a workout person, and I really got out of it. And so I thought, 15 minutes is nothing. And then when I saw it's only been eight minutes, I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> I really need to get back into this. Made me, made me mindful of what I needed to do. <laughs> but it made me also realize that I can do this 15 minutes a day for 30 days. Anything above that is cake and icing. Um, mm-hmm. That means if I do 25 minutes, good for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think and the goal is to, I mean, get your heart rate up. So yes. do. And I realize this isn't something that's going to, I'm going to come out like a size smaller at the end or, you know, anything. I'm not doing some crazy 30 day challenge where I'm going to lose, you know, two sizes or something, but it is something just to get moving, make you feel better. It's creating a habit slash routine of yep. getting that physical activity, whether it's in the morning or throughout the day. And I think that's something we need to challenge ourselves, including myself, especially most of us, we're sitting in front of a computer all day, so we got to get up. We're sitting in a car driving. That too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you really, like, actually this whole week, because I was working on the website, I've been sitting so much, my butt was actually starting to hurt. <laughs> like, you know, you got to get up. So mm-hmm. it's just little it. things like that. Um so I really Besides, like it's tip. proven that you're healthier, you're happier, like you were saying the quote, um, that you're actually more <laughs> productive you when you do take those little breaks, when we do let our brain stop and say, mm-hmm. okay, hello, um, I need some oxygen. Yeah. And what I will say for, to have an active lifestyle, the common misconception is you don't have to go to a gym to be active. You can just simply by going for a walk, uh, whether it's just going to your mailbox or Um, going to the post office if it's nearby, like taking that walk outside instead of driving, which I know is hard for us in rural counties because we don't always have safe uh, walking areas or sidewalks, so you got to be careful. But trying to get that walk in is very important. And walking is the easiest and cheapest way to work out. But I also want to say, like including your 15 minutes, you can get those cheap resistant bands and then yeah. you can be doing some Tony moves and it doesn't have to be cardio. It can be Tony moves, which is something a lot of people leave out, but you do need to get that strength, strength activity strength. Yeah. in there. As I well. did leave out the point where I was standing on my half ball little thing and oh. I was doing the resistant bands and one popped in my face. So oh. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, so so I'm not going to re- readjust. You take away from that. <laughs> don't let that deter you from continuing. Yes. I kept going. Out. Eight more minutes. <laughs> And if it happened, okay, so I went to a workout class and they had resistant bands. Well, I went late, so I got like the hardest resistant <laughs> band. I don't know what we did, but they like slapped me in the face. <laughs> oh, and they're like, Are you okay? And I was like, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> like, my face hurts. So, okay, moral of the story isn't not to use them, it's just to be safe with them. Be safe with them. Like, <laughs> and if you're going to a class with resistant bands, get there early so you can get the <laughs> right one. But no, you're, there's different, there's the light one, there's a medium, and there's a heavy one. So know which one you're at. I usually do a light to medium. Um, the heavy one, forget it. Like, there's no way. And plus, I think I'm just terrified that it'll slap me in the face again. <laughs> Dramatized. But my challenge is, because it's Christmas, and what I realized from Thanksgiving is that you got to somehow release the stress. And the best way to do that is, I think, is trying to do Drew's challenge Go and get those 15 minutes of an exercise because that can be a stress reliever. Whether it's walking outside or doing some kind of form to let it go and get those endorphins out. But that would be my challenge is don't find a different activity rather than drinking or even yelling or, you know, because family drama, it happens. I don't know why I think in my family it's going to be drama free and then it ain't. But, (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, that's my activity. Try not to lose it. I'm going to go back to our first episode, actually, and write those tips um, because, yeah, that really, I didn't see it coming. But you know what? I'm also the type of person where who will hide my stress for a very long time. And then Drew saw it because we had an, a 4-H event, and I lost it at the end once everything was done. But throughout the whole day, I thought I looked normal. Did I look normal? Well, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes, you held it in very well. I thought, like, you know, I didn't think it affected me. And it's the days that you don't think you're stressed, and then your body hits you like, no, you're stressed, girl. So uh, be careful with those days. Be aware of it. and Again, be mindful. Yeah, be mindful. 
Um, that's a good word. That's a very good word. Word of the day. And then wrap up, because some of us didn't maintain our gain. Has anyone done the maintain your gain? No? I'm doing it. As I say, this week, week three was fitness, physical activity. So I like yours because they brought it up <laughs> to do an hour to 30 minutes a day. <laughs> um, but I like the 15 minutes a day. That's something more doable. I know it's achievable. I, yes, here. it's achievable. Can't talk. But, um, yeah, trying to just get that physical activity is something in. And I barely started again this week, kind of like Drew. Um, it's so hard when you're at with the family and, you know, work was hectic this past month for us. And so just trying to keep it in. So keep up with the maintain no gain. It's still going. We're halfway through. We have three more weeks. Hopefully. I did gain more than two pounds. <laughs> but slowly I lost one. So two more to go and I'll be back in what we need to do for the goal of maintain no gain. But just if you're doing it, keep doing it. It's a good program. I actually really thought the program itself was really nice. The presentation, the PowerPoints. I was like, oh, I was like, okay. <laughs> so I'm proud of our um, team, our nutrition team, and our family community health team. But any final thoughts? No. Oh, okay. So we're just going to wrap up the challenges again. So it was going to be, be, don't be doing, don't get on a diet. Be mindful of what you're eating and incorporate with Jessica's, which is also try those substitute healthy substitutions. And then June's it, and Drew's go together, as well as mine, but June's was having a morning routine, creating one that's good for you, that works for you, and if it incorporates the 15 minutes a day in the morning or any time, but it can be part of your morning routine, get it in, and then try to find a bit of an outlet to not be stressed. That's a big one. Um, but that's the end of our episode. Stay tuned for more podcast episodes and we're launching our website our website is going to be because it's free guys we're on a budget we're non-profit is <laughs> <laughs> fabloagrolife.weebly w-e-e-b-l-y dot com and we're going to have p- blog posts we're going to keep posting our newsletter which will also be hopefully within the week <laughs> I haven't done it yet but I'll work on it um and we'll also have our newsletter it's an award winning <laughs> um so make sure to check out our newsletter so who's Stay safe. Be mindful. Just breathe. Stay sweet. And stay fab.